Well, I remember the war quite well, too well. We were very young, and I was sitting on the step. I remember George saying, go and comb your hair, so I'll remember <laughs> you look looking right or something. But it was, my mother was in bed for two or three days. It was such a worry for her. And the dad coming up and pretending, you got to get up, you know, and so on. And she, she did. Well, when Fred left, she didn't want to repeat it and tried very hard, but again was ill for a day or so. It was uh, you know, very hard on the family because they knew what they were facing. It was ground warfare, you know, 1914, 1918. They knew what was happening. They saw death. Uh, trench warfare was very uncomfortable too, sleeping in those muddy trenches. They were very thankful when the boxes would come when I say boxes, I mean treat boxes, food and socks, knitted socks and things like that for them to brighten the time. Even wartime news was something, but that came by telephone from Sterling Station to whoever had a telephone. Because when George was wounded, we did not have a telephone, but the neighbor had one. And he came across the fields with the message of the gunshot wounds in the neck. There were two Hazeman men in the first war, and when I left Sterling in 51, these men were still full of shrapnel from the First World War, and they used to work up through the body and out their neck. And that was 1951. Now, the war was over in 1918, and they still had this shrapnel. And many of them coming home, you know, were even the thunderstorms bothered them. They sound so much like warfare. Fortunately, my brothers didn't have that seriously, but I know some that did. The old men from the First World War, they used to congregate, maybe five or six of them, on the corner, and I suppose rehash all the things that happened. Those men went through a hell of a lot. Some of them were gassed, you know, in pretty bad shape. It was the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. That's the three 11s. We repeated that quite a bit. That's kid stuff, isn't it, to repeat that? There was always that silence. When war was declared, there was silence. And then the news broadcasts, there was a silence. And didn't matter who was at your table, and mother did like, and dad did like to entertain, and the hired man would be there, and myself. There was just silence for the news. Every day, there was a big list in the paper, missing in action, missing presumed dead. There was another boy out there in Ridge Road, Jack Wood, missing in action. That's all they ever heard from him. Talk of trouble is sent through the country, and we need an army to fight for the right. Young men enlist and are sent to the battle to fight the offender and help our allies. And the young men cry, oh Canada, we'll gladly go and fight for thee. And the young men cry,
great danger And yet there's a danger Much greater within The noise we make as we constantly bicker Would hush not a whisper If we listen to hear All the thousands cry